What's up, Homestead Homies? I'm Katie. I'm Landon. And I'm Emma. And I'm Bracken. And we're from Missouri. And you're watching Off Grid with Doug and Stacy. All right, guys, welcome back to the show. <laughs> oh, man, it's a beautiful day, and I'm going to be building some more beds. I'm still working on my fence uh, surrounding our garden area, um, but everything's coming along nicely, um, and everything will still work out, and we still have plenty of time uh, to get our food in and everything else. We have a lot of seed starts, uh, a lot of tomato plants, a lot of things that we like, peppers and so forth and so on, uh, that we'll be getting into the ground, and those videos are coming. Uh, so just be patient with us. Uh, we are eating out of the garden already, as you saw in this video right here. Um, we pulled out some stuff. We had some grilled vegetables, and what a delight that was. So um, the summer's going to be progressing. Our garden's going to grow, and right now I'm working on some more raised beds. Stacy loves the raised beds. What I'm using here is uh, the 2 by 6s and those are cedar boards. We use cedar because they're a lot more re resistant to rot, and we don't really feel comfortable using um, treated lumber. Now they do say that the way they treat lumber these days is not like the old days where it was more toxic, uh, but to err on the side of caution, we go with raw cedar wood uh, that we can get uh, pretty inexpensive. Um, so check your local areas, try to find someone who does saw milling if you can, and that'll really help out on keeping your cost down. So today we're gonna be putting together some eight foot beds, uh, four feet deep, and uh, they're basically going to uh, set opposite of these here and then when this all comes together, you'll see exactly what we're doing. So today we're just going to build some beds and hang out, and hopefully you guys can pick up a little information from this video. Let's go. So one of the nice things about just going with an eight-foot bed is that, um, you know, four foot is a good recommended depth for your beds, your raised beds. The length is however long you want to make them. I mean, if you want a really long one or you can have a really short one, it really doesn't matter. But Four feet, is, four feet is kind of recommended so you have, um, you're able to reach in uh, from both sides very comfortably, okay? That's about the you know, good average uh, width of a raised bed. And um, you know, when you get the eight foot boards, then you just cut down the, uh, you just cut down the eight footers into two four footers. And so there's no waste on your boards. So if you got like, you know, if you did a 10 footer, then you would do uh, if you had uh, an eight foot bed, then you would have two feet left over, so that wouldn't be copacetic to your build. So think about that in, in when you're ordering your lumber or you're thinking about your setup is how can you um, size it to where it's going to have zero waste. You know, you want to have as least amount of waste as possible because when you have waste with your boards, then you're just throwing money away. So right now, um, we use uh, two by sixes and there we use four of them high. So it's a two foot raised bed. And then we'll be um, cutting two boards um, at four feet. See? Because each end of our um, raised beds will be, will require two boards. Because you'll get two, you know, we build them four high, so you'll get two boards off of each one. So two of these eight footers at each end will equal four boards, okay? So that's how we do that. So we'll set that over there until we're ready to cut, and then we'll just measure out our next board. And what I try to do too is when I'm looking at these, I'll try to, um, you know, get the ones that aren't as aesthetically pleasing, so that way the longer boards, you know, have a little better look. There's some that have like some knots in them and stuff like that, so. You might want to think about that too, but you know, it's really not that necessary. That's just what I do. All right, so we have our two boards here. So uh, two boards equals four four footers. And then that'll give us, um, you know, that'll give us one end. And then we'll keep working through this pile until we have all of our material ready to go. And then we'll uh, put it all together for one raised bed. Now I have my uh, ends cut and I'm laying out my uh, boards and I want to just go over a couple of things real quick. One is, you know, I'm not a professional carpenter. This is just like us on the homestead building things ourselves. So, you know, if that's what you're looking for. 
you probably stopped by the wrong video. We do a good job. We've built buildings and everything here is still standing and does a great job. But we're not like these uh, meticulous type of uh, carpentry dudes with all this stuff. We just show you how we do it and our tips and tricks. So that's number one. <laughs> um, number two is um, a lot of people always ask, because we're off grid and we don't have any solar power and um, you know no wind turbines or anything like that, how do we charge up these batteries for these drills and uh, the saw and stuff? We do keep a small generator here on the property and in the future here I'm going to be doing a video about generators you know living off grid. So we use that, um, it, you know we don't use it that much uh, just to power some stuff that we need and occasionally the laptop or whatever so you guys can watch our videos. Um, but you know that's one of the questions we get a lot of. We also uh, if we know we're going to a friend's house in town or stuff like that we'll just drag them along with us, plug them in while we're visiting and then all of our stuff will be uh, charged up when we come home. So. Those are a couple of ways there and I also did a video right here on how you can uh, get internet off grid and with no solar. So maybe check that out. It goes a, a little more in depth to um, some other tricks of the trade that we use. And we're looking at a few more tricks um, that might be coming up in future videos um, after I do my homework about it and, and check it out. So and a lot of people ask why we don't do solar. It's just for us. We haven't found the cost to benefit. Um, in our favor yet and one day it might happen but for us right now it hasn't happened so when you're putting these boards together too right you'll want to uh, this is a trick right here these cedar boards you know they've been sitting here for a little bit so they got a little bit of a bow in them so make sure you look down your uh, board and you find that bow and I like to put the, the curve to the inside okay because it only makes sense that once I get this built and I fill it full of dirt the pressure is going to push against the sides of the board and it's going to straighten it back out. So I have all my curves will be coming inward. And then, um, like I said, when I fill it up with dirt, it'll help level that out. So what I'm doing right now is just connecting my ends. Um, I'll get my first box kind of going, uh, make sure it's square, and then I'll build up from there. Also, uh, just another tip, when you're doing this, uh, we use the treated like deck screws. They're made for outdoor. They're going to last you a lot longer. Uh, than say a nail or a, a non-treated uh, type of fastener or something that isn't made you know obviously to be outside in the weather this will have dirt in it it'll have um, you know rain and water and everything getting on it so that's a good suggestion another thing to consider when you're building your raised beds is this is like your long board and then you have your sides die into your long board right so make sure when you're doing your square that you, you keep the same, these are like totally basic beginner carpentry stuff, but just make sure that if you're dying to the inside of your board that you do that on all four corners. Don't pull it to the outside and then you'll throw off your whole garden bed and you'll never find square because of the different measurements. So if you start off um, putting your boards to the inside, make sure you finish that way as well all the way around. This is what I mean. So we're on the insides of all of our boards. You could be on the outside, right? So we're just wanting to make sure that on the end, we're on the inside of all of our boards all the way around. And that way, when we go to take our measurement, we'll be uh, maintaining square. And then when you get done with um, putting it all together, then you can move it around and kind of get it squared up and then start moving on to putting in corner braces and um, securing the whole box. Really building a, a raised bed is pretty easy work. Um, you just need a few little tools and uh, minimal carpentry skills and you'd be able to do this same project. All right, so we have our first boards uh, laid out as into a box, and now we're gonna check for square, and then we're just gonna keep building it up uh, one row at a time. Now, one way to check for square, again, these are kind of elementary, but um, since I'm doing it, I might as well share with you guys um, what's going on. You basically are just gonna run, one way to do it is just run your tape um, from this corner 
of the box to this corner of the box and then you get your measurement okay then you do the same thing on the opposite side you'll run your measurement from corner to corner and when you're square both of your measurements will be the same all right so now we have our base pretty much laid out and now it's just going to be uh, wash rinse and repeat we just find the boards Again, I'm just checking them, seeing which way they're bowing, and then I'll just uh, stack them up and just repeat the process all the way around the boxes. And if you don't have it perfectly square um, in the first part of the process, like we talked about a little bit ago, you can also wait until you get everything up. It'll be just, it'll be the most crucial time to make sure it's totally square is right before you fill it up, because once you put your dirt in there, um, you know, you're not going to be able to move it around or anything. So what you got is what you got. So right now we're just going to move around this box, keep putting in our, uh, boards and, um, we'll build this thing up. Uh, but you know, if you guys really want to meet up with us, just come out to the conference and, uh, one of the conferences that we're going to be at. And we'll be able to spend a little time together and hang out. We're going to be at the uh, Mother Earth News Conference in Vermont. Uh, this coming up in June 2017. And we'll also be at the Homesteaders of America Conference in October. That's on the 14th and that's in Virginia. And so if you want to check out our schedule, where you could possibly come and meet up with us at and hang out and swap stories, um, just check the description box below this video. And it'll give you guys uh, all the schedules of everything we have going on for 2017. All right, we'll keep this going. And then I'll show you guys in a little bit how it's going to be turning out. So, again, I mean, uh, these beds, we use the 2 by 6 boards because um, the 2 inch thick is going to last us longer. I mean, even though they're cedar... They're still gonna probably fade out eventually, but the cedar is gonna last a lot longer. We had some thinner boards um, on some other things that we were using uh, for raised beds. It was like a kit that we bought at one of the big box stores. And because they were so thin, we didn't get that much life out of them. So with it being the uh, two inch thick, is gonna last us a lot longer. So that's something to think about too. And it, of course it's going to cost you a little bit more money, but in the long run, it's going to save you from having to purchase it sooner. You know, it's going to last you a lot longer with the uh, elements, the water, the dirt and everything going on. So hopefully this wasn't too boring for you. We'll get this video wrapped up. I'm putting on my last board right now. Again, I'm double checking to see which way it bows so I can put the bow towards the inside and then that way when the uh, dirt and water and everything pushes on it which it will it will push it more uh, you know it'll push it straight so not too complicated of a build hopefully it gives you guys a little confidence to build something like this yourself raised beds are really good to work in uh, for a couple reasons you know just like everything they might have drawbacks too some people say they dry out too soon you know, you have to water them more. But um, we think that if you keep a, um, you know, like some mulch or straw on top of it, just like you would a back to Eden garden, that'll help retain the moisture. We haven't had a problem with the moisture yet. It's been working out fine for us. Uh, last year we, we grew in these raised beds and this year we're off to running in them right now. But of course we haven't got to the heat of summer yet either. So, um, you know, pros and cons with everything guys. We're not experts on everything. Uh, we're just trying to share our life with you guys, give you some ideas, maybe build you up some, maybe build you up some confidence so you can do things yourself too. That's what we're all about. I mean, we don't claim to be experts, and we are, we're just trying to share our journey with you guys to give you some ideas. So I'm gonna get this all put together here, and then probably in the next video, I'll show you guys how this whole thing is going to connect to our garden area and um, hopefully
hopefully that'll work for you. So hopefully you got some good tips. Uh, maybe you'll, if you're a beginner carpenter, maybe you know you got some ideas on how to square things and uh, whatever other little nuggets you found in this video. So that's it. Here's a nice raised bed, two feet high. Um, we're going to fill this. We have topsoil laying around because we had some excavating um, projects going on. Actually, we did the outdoor kitchen, which I'll leave a link right here. And um, that put out a lot of dirt for us. And then I actually, uh, behind the outdoor kitchen, we did some more um, grading. So that left a lot more dirt. So we have nice dirt. And we've been in that dirt um, like I used for the chicken coop. You know, the little window box Stacy wanted. I'll link that right here. Um, I put some dirt in there and every time we shovel into that dirt it's full of worms and uh, so that's a good sign so that's what I'll be using I have the neighbor's tractor again so to take a little bit of a shortcut unlike these beds uh, that we had to we just went ahead and hand shoveled all of it um, into these beds I'll leave that video right here too that was a lot of fun um, <laughs> I'm gonna cheat a little bit on this one and use the bucket uh, first thing I'm gonna do though is lay down my tarp and figure out how far apart uh, in front of these beds that I want to make it so we have a nice walkway through here and then I'm gonna leave the same spacing between the two beds um, that we have right here because I'm gonna put a gate in right here so I can back a truck up in here if I ever need to bring more compost in or anything like that I can just put it in the back of the truck and then I can just back it right in through my gate back it right into the beds and shovel it into all the beds so when you're designing your gardening system make sure that you're keeping all this thing into account that you want to have ease of access and you want to think about when you get older you don't want to be pushing a wheelbarrow around and all this kind of stuff you know you will but you know the less you do it the better off you are so hopefully you guys got some tips from this videos uh, that we post and make sure you check our description box below it's going to have all of our engagements uh, for 2017 and if we're uh, in a city or town near you then uh, well I guess the city and the town will be the same <laughs> but if we're in a state city near you Maybe you'll take the time to come out and check us out and hang out with us for a little while and share some of your stories with us. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and we'll see you on the next video. Hey guys, thanks for watching our video. You might want to check out these videos. And if you want to become a Homestead Homie, click the picture of us below. We, we will, will see, see you, you tomorrow. tomorrow.